Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the October 27th, 2022 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the meeting with a pledge of allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Okay, everybody, thanks for coming. Lori, would you please call the roll? Hetsky. Hetsky here. Aiken. Aiken here. Burton. Burton here. Knauer. Knauer here. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Sangster. Sangster here. Weissar. Weissar here. O'Connor. O'Connor here. Gray here. All right. We have minutes from October 13th. Hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to review them. And can I entertain a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. We're going to go a little bit out of order this evening. Uh, probably uh, we're going to move uh, our tabled application number one to the last position on our agenda this evening so that um, those of you who are not here for that application can get on with your lives and go home and watch us on TV uh, with the millions of other people. So, Doug, you wanna get started uh, going through our tabled items, beginning with <coughs> item number two. <coughs> Okay, starting with item number two, 1838 Penfield Road, the Verizon Wireless uh, cell tower. Uh, so this has been on our agenda for a while. Uh, staff has provided the board with a... When he's done talking. Okay, uh, the board has provided, or the staff has provided the board with a draft negative declaration and a draft approval resolution for your consideration. <coughs> and Mr. Okay. Chairman, I'll be recusing. Myself. Okay. Let the record show that uh, Member Knauer has recused himself and uh, Council Weissauer as well for this application. All right, so uh, at long last, I think we uh, have this one ready to go. I don't think anybody in our town is super excited to see a giant cell tower in the four corners, but be that as it may, um, the applicant has shown the cause and the necessity for putting it there. And so have our consultants that we hired to verify all of their um, data. So with that, um, can I entertain a motion maybe to approve the uh, negative, declaration. negative declaration. I'll I'll make a motion to uh, uh, approve the uh, draft negative declaration under seeker. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. And now we have a approval resolution before us. Um, any additional comments before we call the vote? No, nope. I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, resolution for this application. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. On to item number three. All right, item yeah. number three. Welcome 21. back, Bob and Peter. Sorry to interrupt you. No worries. Uh, okay, application number three, 2130 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, Chick-fil-A. Um, one, just one, thanks for all your help, John. Appreciate it. And members of the board, thank what? you. That's it, you're done? Goodbye, John. Take care, everybody. Have a you can hang out if you want. I mean, <laughs> it's exciting it. stuff it's here. <laughs> Hi, ladies. All right, application number three, 2130 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, Chick-fil-A. 
Um, so we did not get a specific request to table uh, from the applicant this week. However, uh, no new information has been submitted um, since the public hearing in June. Um, so if the board is comfortable, we can continue tabling until new information is received. Motion to continue tabling this application. A second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. Application number four, 2070 Empire Boulevard, the RGE substation 55. Um, so they did request, they did not expect to be able to submit in time for tonight's meeting. They did request to table until the November 10th meeting. Okay. Motion to table until next meeting. I'll I second. second. Ooh. Ooh. Who do we give that to? <laughs> Coin flip? <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors? Give it to Terry. <laughs> give it to Terry. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. Um, application number five, uh, the Arbors at Penfield, phase two. So since we last met and had the public hearing last meeting on October 13th, we have received uh, revised plans and uh, responses to comments. Um, we received a full plan set at the end of last week. Uh, but we got responses to the tabling resolution and public comments, as well as um, two <coughs> plans showing additional landscape buffering. Um, that was one of the <coughs> major comments uh, that we heard at the public hearing was buffering to neighbors on the west side, specifically along Penfield Center Road, as well as the north side on the east side of 250, mm -hmm. um, next to the horse farm. Uh, so they have provided two uh, landscape buffering exhibits showing additional landscaping in those areas. Right. Um, so with that, hopefully everybody's been reviewing this application as we've uh, been getting material submitted. Anybody have, um, I have to say the most recent submissions, I haven't had a chance to um, review in full. Um, Bob, this is... Yes, I, <clears throat> I have not either, and in particular, the, the letter that was dated October 25th, the responses. So I'm still reviewing. Okay. Uh, any general... I mean, we talked a little bit at the end of the public hearing. Um, does anybody see any, at least at this point in time, huge red flags from uh, the, you know, the original phase one overall oh. to the submittal of the phase two from so far in your reviews? I don't see any. Okay. I, I haven't completed my review of the materials that okay. uh, just got uh, posted to the drop either. Um, but so far, I don't see anything um, significant in terms of from phase one to the next two phases. Okay. So with that, let's uh, try to um, get our review complete for the November meeting uh, in two weeks. Two weeks. And um, see if we can discuss it further and keep moving it forward. Okay. So I'll... Make a motion that we continue tabling this application, do our review, and then address it next meeting. Okay, we have a second. second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. All right, application number six, 1280 Creek Street, uh, Blessed Hope Community Church. OK, 
Okay, we got some uh, yeah. information. Yeah, so there was some, they submitted responses and revised plans. Uh, oh. Uh, revised plans today. Um, we did receive um, comments back from our architectural consultant. We did provide those to the applicant. They did provide a response as part of their package that they submitted today. Um, staff really doesn't have any concerns with the building architecture, um, we, though we would defer that to the planning board. Um, likewise, with um, the site, um, staff ha doesn't have any substantial concerns. Um, one question we still, um, I need, we need to parse out with the fire marshal is whether the building would be required to be sprinklered based on the occupancy um, proposed. Um, but that is something that we can work through as part of the building permit phase uh, if the board is comfortable. So, I've, I've reviewed the materials that uh, that we received in time. I haven't really reviewed the most recent materials. Um, I, I think um, to the extent that there were some relevant comments made by our architectural consultant um, that uh, the applicant acknowledged um, and, and acknowledged um, that they would be making some revisions uh, new plans aside, um, I'm sure the board all hasn't had an opportunity to review these plans that just came out. So it seems appropriate to uh, uh, to table this just to permit the board members an opportunity to verify that the changes that are being proposed to the application are consistent with the recommendations that Chris made and uh, uh, we can move that forward at that time. Okay. All right, so you want to move to table? Move to table. I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. All right, moving on to application number seven, five ski more lane, the Debella subdivision. <coughs> All right, uh, on this one, so um, staff <coughs> is comfortable with the subdivision. Uh, it, it generally meets all of our requirements. Um, staff has begun drafting um, an approval resolution um, conditioned on um, two items. Uh, one is um, the applicant will be required to go to the zoning board for a variance for the existing metal barn um, based on the dimensions provided by the surveyor. It is 0.3 feet too close to a property line and it does trigger a zoning board requirement. Um, but um, staff is comfortable if the board wants to conditionally approve um, the application pending a positive outcome at the zoning board, uh, the staff doesn't foresee a substantial issue with a three inch variance. Yeah, I, I'm good with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't have some issues with it. No. I, I, I don't at all. So I, I just assume. Okay, okay. Go ahead. I'll make the motion to uh, prepare the part two and three EF first and approve that. Okay, and then uh, so we have a second for that. Kelly seconded. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. And then I'll make a motion to approve the resolution of this application. Okay. Conditionally upon So the condition, there, there's a couple the of conditions that staff was looking at placing in the resolution. One would be the variance, two would be continuation of the um, requirements that were placed on the original Rudy Debella subdivision, which includes the prohibition from jet skis and things like that. Correct. Um, and then the last one is our traditional, um, since an accessory structure will exist on a lot without a primary structure. Um, in the past, given that the applicant has uh, addressed that they will be uh, moving forward with um, seeking um, 
administrative site plan approval for the construction of a single family residence. Uh, we have conditioned in the past a um, surety bond to ensure that a single family structure is built within a reasonable time frame. You, you, you gave him 12 months, right? Yeah, yeah usually you're proposing 12 months, 12 months yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. I'll make the motion to approve. We have a second? I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. Good seeing you. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, seeing as the path stone has not arrived yet, yeah, why don't we do the, uh, uh, we action, do the action item? item. All right, so we have one action item this evening, 1820 Empire Boulevard, the Taco Bell. Um, so uh, back when the board was originally reviewing uh, the application, um, one of the discussion points was um, uh, they had discussed the fact that they were looking at doing a second drive-through, that the drive-through would be um, generally specific to app orders. Um, so it was a recommendation of staff that instead of just showing the one, getting the approval for one drive-through and coming back to do a second, that they uh, show the second with the idea that it may be necessary to move it in the future or alter it um, at, at some later date. Um, corporate has reviewed the plans and has looked at it and suggested um, splitting the drive-through lanes um, off of a single entry point instead of doing two dedicated um, specific lanes. Um, what this will do is provide additional time so they, you won't be confused trying to figure out which lane you're supposed to get into. You start in the drive-through lane and have the opportunity to split based on signage. Um, it reduces the crosswalk. We'll have to cross one driving lane instead of two um, and provides uh, a marginal amount of additional green space through the reduction of pavement. Okay. Seems reasonable. Staff has no concerns with the so, uh, reorganization. So one lane is just for pickup and the other is for ordering? Yeah, so okay. the, the, they had that with their original layout too. The interior <coughs> lane would be for if you ordered on the Taco Bell mobile app, right. there's no order box there. You would drive through, pick up your gotcha. order. Okay. And it would sort of be an express lane, whereas the outside lane would have the uh, traditional call box where you could, um, in menu board, you, where you'd place an order and pick it up at the window. And they um, actually increase green space? <coughs> It increased green that? space because instead of having two separate driving lanes that come out and um, into the parking lot, uh, by connecting it into the existing, it reduces the overall amount of pavement. Okay. If, if you, Can I if, oh, sure. Come on up. You, yeah. Come on up. So pr staff prefers this one over the other one. Uh, I we think it could be helpful because instead of having to pull up and figure out which one of the two lanes you're supposed to go into. You start out in one lane and we'll split based on um, whether you're ordering or you have ordered. Excuse me, Stephanie Albright with APD Engineering. Uh, I just want to clarify the order point because that has changed okay. as they've developed the second drive through and they are proposing a full access order point now. Okay. Versus the Go Mobile, they've had a lot of issues with the Henrietta one where people didn't understand that it was pre-orders only. So they are looking for a full order point there. Okay. So, so it would be two full order. So that would be of the same design as the existing, the order point with the canopy? Yes. Okay. All right, anybody have any issues? Not me. No. 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 Somebody want to move to approve it? Yeah, I'll move to approve. And a second. second. Okay. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Where is our applicant? Uh, Council is here. Council is here. Yeah. Well, we really don't need them to 
to discuss things. To get this started. started. Okay. And if, uh, the board wants to have some internal. Which one? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good answer. We were. They are. They are. They are last. We, we just we moved through things relatively quickly, right. quicker than I expected. So, <clears throat> we got a um, uh, response letter from the applicant. <coughs> commenting on uh, addressing some of the items in our sketch letter. Um, Your foot's around the cord there. <clears throat> Okay, we have uh, the Able. applicant Able to do it. <laughs> in, in transit. In transit. I, I could put him on the speaker phone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we go with the flow. So. Yeah, we heard <clears throat> the microphone. Not while he's driving. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be accused of public safety issue. Yeah. <clears throat> he gets back in the 21. So, um, overall, I think uh, if uh, there's to be another submission, uh, the items outlined in the sketch letter should be addressed by the applicant. Um, some of the um, you know, this will be a type one, it is a type one action, so. It's a type one action. What's that? I said it is a type one action. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we'll be filling out the full EAF, part two and three. And uh, so there's a number of questions there that we, as a, the responsible reviewing agency, need to um, address. And so we just want to make sure that any of the concerns that are brought up in the uh, fully AF, we they're, they're addressed. Um, some of the concerns, I guess, that you know potentially could come to the fore are uh, how. The application um, affects the the character of the community um, and is it consistent with the character of the community? Question 18 in part two. <coughs> and what types of demands will it have on services? Um, You know, I can see that. That's something that I know that I, for one, am uh, concerned a bit about. Well, in, in light of uh, where we are, um, I've got some comments that I would like to uh, discuss with the board. Uh, sure. So. <clears throat> Uh, when we when we provided this applicant with um, <coughs> some questions concerning the diversity of different housing styles, um, they they came back with a little with a little matrix um, on the on the sketch plan, and the matrix um, showed what appeared to be all the same types of of housing. Um, except for a change in the number of bedrooms. So we asked them to uh, kind of clarify that. Um, so, you know, they're, they're coming back and, and uh, uh, 
you know, telling us that uh, the choice is, is offered and, and they've given us uh, A, B, and C to justify um, why they think that having just what appears to be two types of housing meet uh, this diversity that's in the manual. So something popped up here in this response. It's response number 3C, uh, if everybody has that. <coughs> and they mentioned workforce housing. So, um, you know, anybody uh, here unfamiliar with workforce housing, um, it's, a, it's a specific, pro there's programs all over the country, but there's a specific works, workforce housing program in New York State that's, it's not affordable housing, it's not low income housing, but it's housing aimed at kind of that middle earner um, so it has some, it has some uh, um, income limitations so that uh, the developer is providing options for those people that, that desperately need housing. And, and, and really, the, 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 whether it's a two bedroom or a four bedroom is not really relevant. Um, if it's workforce housing, then that's available to one segment of our population. And you know our our job here in part is to is to view this um, through the lens of this community and how these mixed use developments really um, you know meet the flavor of this community and and you know um, providing something that's unique in the mixed use law. Um, so as I'm reading their response three C and I see. Uh, since day, they say since day one, the, tar the project has been targeted for workforce housing. Um, then it goes on to say housing will be provided as represented in other similar Pathstone projects. Um, so, <clears throat> um, if I understand what Pathstone does primarily, is they primarily build affordable housing um, that has very specific income limits. Um, so those kinds of income limits um, really, really target a, a small percentage of the population of the town of Penfield. I got in a little bit today to um, the 2020 Penfield census um, just to kind of gain a better understanding of, you know, what our, uh, you know, median income is in the town or what it was, you know, to years ago, a little over two years ago, and, you know, how that would roll into... Um, I mean, during the 2020 census. Right, right. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's gone up a little bit. Um, you know, they, they usually do, but... So, you know, I guess in, what I'm seeing here is potentially a, a dichotomy between the the two statements in this response C, you know, one says that it's going to be workforce housing and, and one's saying it's going to be uh, housing provided as represented in similar Pathstone projects. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm wondering out loud whether if we allow an applicant to, to target just a very small portion of the population of this community, if we're meeting the intent of the of the mixed use manual for diversity in housing types, um, so that's really um, what you know. And I mean, this is not a public hearing; it's a workshop. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I'd I'd like to get more clarification mm -hmm. from the applicant on that. Um, you know. If you if you look at the income limits on other similar Pathstone projects, um, they're very specific, um, and those those income limits would basically preclude people that would be el otherwise eligible for workforce housing. So that's 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 the the big question that I guess I have. Um, It, for in that point, <clears throat> point number three. Point number three. Okay. Any other comments 
from the board. We have our applicants, Thank engineer, you. and architect who joined us now. So I just want a question. Yeah. On about four, my, my peers here. I didn't, uh, in response to the uh, one about the, uh, if we go ahead with this new proposal, and they're gonna have to go through the whole application again. It refers to, uh, I think it was, you know, Peter, your response, and it says that the, uh, uh, the code compliance issues, the current state of the prior need to be addressed by the town with the current landowner. So that means you guys won't have anything to do with that? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that that's correct. <coughs> yeah, the, if we if move forward, it would be a revised application that would only be dealing with the property um, in the bag. at 18 0 1787. Correct, at 1787. We'd only be working with the Wickham parcel only at that time. Okay. You don't know your your client Peter doesn't own the property yet. That is either, right? correct. Yeah. That is correct, Peter. They do not own the property. Oh, that was our that was our misunderstanding. We had assumed that. Uh, yeah. I, I think that, I think we we thought yeah. after one of the other meetings that somebody mentioned that they had owned the real property that was under review. No. Who owns it? So that's our mistake. Uh, I don't. I'd have to look it up. It's I, an LLC. Um, yeah. I'd have to look up. I know we have a copy of the deed, but I'm not okay. sure. WRM Holdings That's 3 it. LLC. There you go. Thank you. What is it? WRM Holdings 3 LLC. So we'd have to address that problem because it keeps coming up yeah. about, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, if we go ahead with their plans, which, you know, I don't have any issues offhand, but we want to make sure that we address this all this up front. Yes, but if they if they don't own the property, they're not right. the ones who I would have to be I believe that... The, the code enforcement officer is aware of this. Um, and I, I think that they've already sent a letter maybe. I think I Heidi so. uh, Bail. Oh, great. So, so we're already addressing it with the- The town, it, yes. I believe so. Yes. It, it's already being, we believe it's already being addressed. And um, since they don't own the property, it would not okay. be incumbent on- And we haven't had any response from the real owners then? Uh, I'm not, a, I, I'd have to take a look at our code enforcement okay. database. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was a big issue. I mean, it's been a big issue, you know, and like I say, I, I was in the impression that they, they owned it. So, I mean, you know, <clears throat> we'd go ahead, you know, go ahead with this nice application. They started doing their thing and, you know, I'm sure they don't want it either, right. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, they got a vested interest too. So, okay, that's my only question. Thank you. So, okay. does, so does anybody uh, have any comments with what I, what I just, brought up is, does this make sense to everybody or? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd like to understand more what it really means. Peter walked in. Okay, before we get into that, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. Yeah. We'll, we'll fill you in, Peter, in just a minute. Thank you. Before we get into that, I'd just like to um, ask Mike and Doug, these other responses, um, you know, with respect to uh, you know some of the questions that have been posed earlier, Are you guys okay with these responses? Put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> so, the orientation I mean, there, of the buildings, the orientation of the site, and is the, there the is there and specific the, specific one of the questions? Um, I mean, generally, um, you know, I. Looking at Chris Lopez's recommendations, I also saw where he was coming from. Mm -hmm. I see where Pastone is coming from with their layout and specifically um, how the sort of imaginary line boundary between zone A and zone B can kind of complicate the layout of the buildings. Um, you know, arguably, you know, their orientation allows the buildings to remain more compliant than if they were to be rotated 90 degrees and it would push more uh, residential into the zone A. Um, personally, not as, uh, not being on the board, not having a voting decision on it, I, I would be okay with the additional rec the additional residential within the zone A area there. Um, 
you know, there could be an opportunity. I know they're showing the office layouts for the two <coughs> uses in that building, whether those could shift as part of it. Um, you know, I could, I could see both ways, um, truthfully. <coughs> Additionally, um, you know, there's, the sketch only provides so much detail. Um, you know, they've mm -hmm. stated that the main entrance will be a complete street. Um, staff is comfortable with that. It's something we would encourage. Um, in terms of complete street, um, that means uh, town code type public. Yeah, so it would be the the road widths are typically tend to be a little bit narrower because it has a tra traffic calming effect on reducing speeds. It provides for on street parking. Um, additionally, you know, we'd look for curb bump outs or something mm -hmm. like that around where the crosswalks or um, pedestrian walkway would be. It reduces the effective distance a pedestrian has to cross the road um, opposed to traditional um, intersections or traditional pedestrian crossings. Yeah, if I may, because sure. um, when we, uh, the the previous final site plan application, the PRC had provided that uh, level of detail comments. And I believe the design at that time satisfied all those, everything Doug mentioned, that it complied with the street section and the manual, but also the crosswalks. <clears throat> My point being is that final plan, I think definitely showed, uh, that's our intent. We will comply with that. We know so we So that'll be consistent with the first. Exactly, that all those measures. features we had are going to, uh, be reflected in whatever is the updated site plan. Okay, so Peter, I know that you asked for this. Yes. Meeting, <laughs> um, and maybe you could share with us. Uh, yeah. What? What? Why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, first of all, thank. You, when we do, thank you very much uh, for accommodating this and that. Uh, you know, that we can have the ability to discuss this with the board. Our real reason for this, and, and Jason and Sackett's here from Pastone and Mary Majewski from um, Pastro's here also. What we want to be sure is we've all been at this for, you know, over a year now. And, and we've provided this updated sketch uh, based on uh, uh, feedback we had received in the spring of the year. And we got some encouraging feedback and, and subsequently which led to uh, Chris Lopez issuing his memo and the board issuing their letter. What we want to be sure of before Pastone basically takes that next step forward is we want to make sure we understand the comments we've received. That's why we provided the responses, which was to say, this is how we're reading this. This is how uh, we plan to address it. We just want to be able to be sure we understand that. And so I would hope that we could have a dialogue this evening along those lines so that Pastone can, un as Jason always says to us is, um, you know, okay, I th is, um, this is what they want. Yes, we can do this. Let's move it forward. We just want to make sure that next step forward is the right step so that we're not here six months from now again going, ah, you, you still missed the mark. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our goal is to create a plan, prepare a project or a plan that is compliant with the code, meets the intent of the manual, and meets the goals <coughs> of the developer. So. Um, and, and I don't know, Betsy, if you wanted to add anything to that, but that's really what our, our goal is, is, to, is just to be able to have a discussion versus just having to rely on written correspondence. I think we pick up more from each other by discussing it versus, okay, this is what I think was said, let me write it down and put it in writing. Sure. Yeah, the letter, we looked at the letter and said, I'm not sure it gives us very clear answers, the way this sec this particular section of the code is written, there's a lot of ambiguity. So things like variety of housing, what does that mean? We want to make sure we understand what you think it means right. so that we are on the same page. We didn't know if it meant uh, architectural <clears throat> styles. Um, you know, we, we just weren't sure what that meant. So we mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that we're understanding the direction that the board is giving us. We want to just be yeah. really clear as to what we can't, what the rules are so that we can then 
you know, see if we can meet them. So, Betsy, one other thing I'll mention, kind of related to that point. As you know, there's a moratorium, mm -hmm. and I would expect that there will be a public hearing in the beginning of the year with, uh, with kind of uh, addressing the ambiguities that are in the code. So that's not that far off. So mm -hmm. I just I put that out there as another option also, mm -hmm. but on the timing of that, because I know the moratorium runs out, I think, in, in January time Yeah, and frame. I know it's going to be like Christmas tomorrow. It's the time flies. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Um, so I just that's why to... we didn't want to go right off. We, we looked at this letter and we're like, hmm, I'm not sure that we all would read the letter the same way. So. Yeah, I, yeah, probably a better best way to say it, may, maybe it's us, but um, I don't think we had a level of comfort. I, 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 right. We didn't have a level of comfort uh, of advising past on going, okay, reading this letter, this is what we need to do. And that, I think that's why we wanted to be here this evening to make sure we understood it. So that we can and, give past. And they the came message. in a little late because Jim had given some yep. comments, and particularly like the variety of housing, because we just really didn't know what that mm -hmm. meant in the code. Um, and so, you know, Jim was talking about the income levels and the type of path housing the path stone does, and that's what we referenced in our response mm -hmm. letter. I'm going to let Jason tell you because it would be good for Jason to tell you what they do for housing, but we weren't sure what what mm -hmm. variety of housing actually mm -hmm. was intended to mean. Is it the structure? Is it the architectural style? Income levels did, did not occur to me. Did, did he, he, were you present, sir, when I was discussing the, our concern with your response here with regard to No, he oh, just walked in. Okay. So. Yeah. so maybe we should just touch on that just yeah, a that little bit again. Great. So, um, you know, <clears throat> clearly the, the, the board does not believe that a whole bunch of apartments, um, regardless of the income level, that vary in bedroom styles creates some level of diversity. It's a single type of housing. It's multiple dwelling housing. Whether it's two bedrooms or three bedrooms, it's multiple dwelling housing. And then there's townhouses. So there's really, we, you know, we see this as two types of housing being offered. So we've, we've asked a couple of times in a couple of different ways for you to kind of share with us what you intend to do, and this is our this is our first real peek at um, what I believe you're trying to tell the community in uh, uh, your response C to question number three <clears throat> in the sketch letter. And uh, the first statement says this project since day one has been targeted for workforce housing. Then it goes on to say, uh, housing will be provided as represented in other similar Pathstone projects. So we know the Pathstone <coughs> organization as being a, a, a very good developer of primarily affordable housing projects. So affordable housing is not workforce housing. It doesn't have the same income levels, uh, it doesn't have the same amenities. So, you know, we want to make sure before we give this application an indication that there's what are we merit doing? in moving forward, that we understand what's being offered to this community and whether or not it meets the character of this community, specifically in and around the mixed use zones, which was the intent of the mixed use development manual and very clearly stated in, in the introductory sections of the mixed use development manual. There's a, there's a purpose here. Um, and it, yeah, it, you've been here, you and Peter, many, many times and you've, you know, you've seen applications come and you know, this is really a kind of a, uh, a, a rural kind of slash ag you know, kind of section of the community. Um, and so you know, sometimes applicants come to us and say, well, no, you, you, know, you can't put a concrete and glass structure here. It really doesn't fit in our community. So, you know, we're trying to apply those same principles to this application, um, but we want to make sure we understand what, what kind of diversity in housing you're proposing to this community that will be meeting with the character of this community. So if it's workforce housing um, and, you know, we, we can be assured of that, then that's one type of housing. And then if, if you're saying other similar Pathstone projects, 
affordable housing, then we'd like to know that too. And then we've got the townhouses. Are the townhouses going to be market rate? Are they going to be available to <coughs> the Penfield public at large? Um, because this is a community, I, I mentioned earlier, I, I looked it up today, this is a community that has a median income of uh, $93,000 a year for a family of 2.46 people. And, and that's significant, I know you guys know this because in the affordable housing market, it, it, it's all based on the number of residents per unit, per dwelling unit in terms of income limits. So, you know, it's just, it's a number. We're not trying to compare, you know, apples to, to you know, mashed potatoes, but it's, you know, there are, there are values here associated with these different kinds of housing. And, you know, this board does have an obligation to ensure that applications that come before us for mixed use projects meet the intent and the, Parts of the manual that um, that are more clearly defined, <laughs> um, so that so that we're doing our job and we understand exactly what's being proposed and we can offer you guidance on whether or not this board thinks it meets uh, what we're charged with. So, Jim, are you saying that? And I, is that <coughs> when you said that uh, workforce housing is one type of housing? Affordable housing is one type of housing. Market rate is one type of housing. <coughs> that is the, that's how we're, uh, variety is being. Well, not really. I mean, if you go into the mixed use manual and you go into the mixed use zoning ordinance, there's actually a list, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's apartments and it's single family and it's patio homes. And so th there's a whole bunch of different things that has to, that speaks to architectural style, but then there's another right. part of, the mixed use development manual that deals with projects that are in keeping with the character of this community. The mixed use development was developed specifically to integrate mixed use projects within this community, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going to, to try to define this for you. Um, that, that, and that's, that's something that I think that the town board will will clarify um, in in the near future. Um, but you know, rather than ask me, this board is asking you as the applicants and and consultants. Tell us up front what it is that you're intending to do. Okay. Well, you know, and that's when we responded to three. You know, we gave three instances because that, as Betsy said and Jason has said. We're not sure how Variety is defined. So as default, you know, we went to Webster's Dictionary. I said, okay, are we defining it by types of units? So we said, okay, here's the types of units. Are we defining it by income? So that's why we responded the way we did going, because, and this is exactly why we're here this evening. It's like, well, how is this being defined so that we know the definition we have to meet? You know, it's, it's, to me, this is no different than any other code type requirement that if you have to meet this criteria, it's like, okay, I know the criteria to meet. And, and I pe appreciate what Peter has said, you know, the code by saying a variety, flexible housing variety, and, you know, not being defined elsewhere in the code, well, and the other interesting thing with the mixed use district, <coughs> we're, you know, we're focused on this project and we're talking about workforce versus um, past owner, what that means, Penfield Heights, the Arbors, they have different definition of diversity. I don't think we ever talked about. Yeah, but we're not here to, we're not here to discuss those applications. We're looking at the whole district or are we looking on nope, a parcel We're looking by at this application. Basis? Nope. Yeah. Wait. I, is it, I, that's what, is it, is it variety in the district or is it variety on the specific parcel, specific project? It, essentially, we're looking at both, right? right? Um, variety on a parcel by parcel basis as well as the overall um, district as a whole. But if you do take a look at the pro project like the Arbors, there is Oh, they have many types. Yeah, right? you've got single family detached, you've got the uh, townhome style, you've got uh, walk up above commercial, and there's apartment buildings, you know. 
at least, I think. And there's patio homes. And right. But again, we, yeah. mm -hmm. we, we reviewed that in, in keeping with the, the character of the community and, and, and. Yeah, I, I can appreciate that because part of it is you have to review it based on, you know, um, for lack of a better way, what's before you. I don't want to draw comparisons, but here we're working with 10 acres. We're not working, you know, so that in and of itself limits you to your flexibility of because of, uh, you know, if bringing in the complete street and those right of ways and the open space requirements. Now, if you're truly, you know, it'd be a lot easier if you're working with 50 or 60 acres to. It gives you more room to bring variety in, and that's a little bit of the the conundrum we're we're here is working with here, is the fact of okay, the, the tax parcel is a ten acre parcel, and we're up and it's split between zone A and zone B, and we're working with a design manual that says okay, zone A is you're allowed up to twenty units per acre, zone B you're allowed to six to ten units per acre. As a planner and engineer, I read that to, well, with 30 years of experience saying, if those are the densities that we're being told are allowed to, that tells me it's multifamily. And like I said, and I base that on experience. Uh, you know, I'm not thinking single family detached at six to 10 <clears throat> units per acre. And and also six to 10 units per acre on, on a, a, a 10 acre parcel, or in this case, seven and a half acres of zone B tells me this is gonna be a multifamily type housing. But also my experience shows there are a variety of ways you can provide that housing. A variety of choice you can provide that housing to. And some of them you, you've hit upon, which is okay, um, is, is it a part, true apartment style living? Or is it walk up type townhouse living? Those are varieties, those based on what, it can be anything of what your, uh, your lifestyle situation is. Are you a snowbird? Uh, is it, uh, I'm a single parent? Is it, no, we're a, a young family with children or we're an empty nester. Th to me, that is the, uh, the goal of the, of the manual in the district is you want, and I use a word that you've used a lot, you want to kind of create a little village that has, and what makes a village successful is that it, it can appeal across the board. Well, let me, let me just interrupt for a minute, if I may. If, if, you, if you read the, the manual, you'll, you'll also note that the intent is really to provide um, options, residential and commercial, for the residents of this community. Correct. We're talking about, um, you know, college graduates that are moving out. We're talking about young people getting married, people having families. We're talking about people that are downsizing, uh, seniors that no longer want to live in their own home. So, you know, this is this is kind of in keeping with the character of the community. So this is, you know, providing options for all those folks, you know. And, and very much appreciate the value of, of dialogue, um, but with respect to your response to question three, we are going to have to ask you to provide a written response that clarifies um, what, what statements you've made here in, in your uh, uh, subparagraph C. So and, we, we and need that to is know the purpose of the dialogue because yep. we need know, to know we, what that means. Right, because we would address that as part of the actual application that comes in because there is the 10 factors of mixed use design. And I know that's one of those questions because it's how do you comply with, with table 6.1, whatever. So uh, we know that, but the, uh, that's uh, why we've requested this dialogue because obviously if we were defining variety something differently than what the board believes it is and we went down the path of making the application going, okay, we believe we've checked the box on variety because this was the criteria we used and then to find out from the board going, that's not what we mean by variety. We mean variety is this then it's like, oh shoot, we gotta restart again. And that's what we're just trying to avoid. I so. think I heard one comment that uh, the number of rooms and that does not fall within what you consider variety. So we're looking at beyond that other factors like the style of the um, 
So we've had some dialogue about that, and, and this was in the comment that we made back in June that um, after, after that little matrix that we requested showed up on the sketch plan, um, and the comment was that the number of bedrooms does not constitute a different category of housing. Mm -hmm. It's still a multiple dwelling. So, you know, the, there, are, there are lots of nuances in the manual that, that kind of leads you to what the intent, the big picture intent is here. We, we just really need to see what your intent is in terms of the, the diversity and the different types of housing and what segment of this community uh, will be eligible for uh, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, qualify or be able to afford um, the, all the different options that you're offering. <clears throat> Here, you gotta be on. You gotta come up in the microphone. The control room downstairs gets uh, very just, upset you know, when we don't speak into the microphone. Uh, I'm just trying to understand what you're saying from architectural perspective. I think I know what you're saying, but I just want to uh, confirm it. So for me as an architect, a uh, different variety of uh, building type means uh, double loaded corridor multifamily building, uh, single family building, two story townhome, uh, patio uh, house, or walk-up style apartment flats, uh, which means like you would have a two-story building, every apartment will have a, its own entrance, but you will have a separate apartment on the first floor and another apartment on the second floor with the stair going up there. Considering the size of this property, I think we can fit three types of the building a big building which is double loaded corridor, multi-family dwelling, real true townhome style where each unit will have two floors. You come in on the first floor and you have your living room, kitchen on the first floor, bedrooms on the second floor. And we can, you know, they could be like uh, four, six or eight uh, units in a stretch. And we can fit one more building that will be a little smaller, maybe four, maybe four units. Uh, that would be called walk-up apartment style, with apartments on the first floor and apartments on the second floor. That will pretty much take most of the available area on the site for the buildings. Would that be considered enough variety in the building type? That basically, that's what I want to know. <clears throat> you're, you're, you're really talking about architectural style well because and that's access. in my mind that's, that's, that's what variety that's of, okay. of building means so that's a variety of building yes the the <coughs> manual specifically refers to diversity of housing options so so the, the that's applicant what I, excuse that's me what I the applicant understand. provided a response right. we're asking for a clarification on that response okay so housing so, options is not the same as building types you're going to have you're going to have to give us better clarification on on your response in in uh, subparagraph C of uh, item three and and then then we'll see what the board thinks. I think they're saying it's both though, right? I mean, it's, I don't know. It seems yeah. like that's part of the discussion. Is it's it's both both aspects of that. Well, specifically to see, right, but to they're see. not talking about architectural styles and and yeah. and it, you know, where they're located on the site. So right. you know, and and that's really a thing that that Chris can help us with. This other item is something that that's a challenge to the board and the community to advance this project. I think you could argue that the. The, even if these are all, and you want to call them all, multifamily housing, that they they appeal to or provide a different 
style of housing or option of housing to different people. The person who is interested in a townhome is likely not going to be the same person who is interested in a um, corridor apartment. Um, likewise, the person who's interested in a single family detached or even a single family attached duplex is not the same person who would be interested necessarily in a townhome or in uh, you know, a low story uh, or low rise apartment building. Um, so they do, it could be argued that they provide, that the different architectural styles of housing, even if they are all still apartments-ish, um, do provide uh, a variety based uh, on their design, or that they would be more interested to different people based on their design. Mm -hmm. Which is all well and good, but it doesn't speak to the specific response in item 3C. That's, that's, my, that's the focus of my question. And so with 3C, would statistical measures be helpful? Because we, we, we basically commission market studies for projects and we have lower, moderate, higher, and even unrestricted units in most, if not all of our developments. So um, what we were trying to show here is that uh, we <coughs> could have uh, or propose or have potential residents that would have these types of jobs based upon what our market study says the demand is. So um, we could clarify with income levels or um, household income, as you alluded to, would that be helpful? All of it would be helpful, okay. um, but mm -hmm. specifically the question was, are you proposing workforce housing? Are you proposing affordable housing? And if so. Or both. Or both. Right. Uh, you know, or, or you know, are, are any of the townhomes uh, available to people that without income limits, people right. that live within the community that, you know, that, that's, that's really what we're after. Okay. So work, workforce housing is kind of a, sometimes it's defined, sometimes if it's, a, it's an elusive term. And I well, think it's that, very well defined. In New York State, it's very well defined. And so, in some instances, it's um, the, the board has had projects where the um, an applicant will say, "This is what we're going to do," and then down the line, it turns out to be something a little bit different. And right. so, that's what they want to make sure that that they understand you know, what's really proposed here. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Does that help? But that's, so that's one aspect. That's uh, Jim was concerned about clarifi clarification on 3C. So I, but I do think there is merit in the other uh, variety structure architecturally. Agreed. But that's. But we're talking about two different things. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're, we are talking about two different things. But I think I think both both of those elements are under consideration. Um, as as part of the approval process, for sure. Yeah, the yeah I, I, the way I see it, um, <clears throat> it is a combination of both. I don't know if you even call them categories, but the uh, um, the demographic that is targeted, a variety of potential. Residents, as well as the uh, Mira, as you were talking about, the variety of structure and, and types of structures, so, it's both. so that it creates a you know more of a, a, a neighborhood type feel. That you know, I think everybody here could probably agree that when you walk through a neighborhood that is. Um, I guess I'm going to say enjoyable. You get a variety of visual uh, elements that not everything looks exactly the same. And um, that's part of what makes it attractive to you. Whereas if you walk through, uh, you know, I guess I'm going to say like an army barracks or something, I can, I'm not comparing this to an army. I want to be 
you know, polar opposites or whatever, but um, that's not the kind of place, hey, uh, let's walk there today. Um, no, I want to hang out there with all the exactly the same buildings and right. um, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so <laughs> that's. What is, did we? Uh, there's a question that's still lingering in my mind. What, like, what, what does the board think about? the differences between what Chris Lopez had proposed about the orientation, even though it's in A versus, you know, what, what they're proposing here with kind of trying to keep the building out of A. I, my personal um, read on that is, you know, I thought that he had a, a, a good idea with that. I do acknowledge their concern about they want to go to the zone B section uh, because the zone A requirements are more stringent. That's part of the reason why they pulled back and are coming back in with the zone B <coughs> application. So that's a, it's a valid, there are valid points in my view on, on both sides. <coughs> Um, at the end of the day, this is a development that'll be here for decades, and we just want to all be proud of it. Yeah, you know, um, and I've, I've hesitated for several, several months to bring up this topic, but what the heck, it's time. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm willing to do it. You know, again, I mean, this is a conundrum uh, of the fact of, and a conundrum before both of us, uh, the planning board and the applicant, because we have that conundrum of that challenge of creating the best layout, but also being code compliant. Right. Okay. And I'll admit, they, they had Chris's layout up there. Yeah, it looks good. We even consider, I get what he wants to accomplish there, and I see all the positive attributes to it. Problem is, doesn't comply with the code. So, and so where is... You're talking about in terms of... Of rotating that building um, and putting it on the east-west street. We've now brought the residential building into zone A, which... And you, you don't know, have enough... Uh, right, and you know, right. and I, you know, and... Back in the spring, you know, we were saying, you know, guys, this is really more of a zone B project than a zone A project. That's why Pathstone has pivoted accordingly. Now, the subject I've kind of kept at arm's length. If you wouldn't mind going to Chris's layout again, Michael, I'm sorry. Is, you know, here's the thing. You look at that layout, and I... You, you, we may all believe that could be a better layout, a more compact development, maybe achieve some of the streetscape goals and everything. But with the challenge of the code compliance, I was like, what keeps coming back to me is the planning principle of clustering. And, and bear with me here for a few moments. You know, when we first started getting into this, I remember having a conversation with staff and I said, you know, this zone A, zone B line through here, I go, there's really no definition, you know, it's like, hey, this line is, you know, 500 feet off of the Route 250 right of way. I go, we're, we've kind of eyeballed it in based on aerial photography. And, <coughs> and you know, Mark Valentine says, well, yeah, you know, it was kind of meant to be a little flexible to, you know, based on layouts. My point being is, if we believe this, is there a way, as in how we do clustering, the, the basis of conservation subdivision design is understand what the code gives you and, and agree to that, but then use the clustering provisions, it allows you to use the clustering provisions to create the best layout that works with the property you have. My point is, can we do something similar here? Understand, if you, you go back to, don't, so you don't have to do this. You're, go to that you're, BME layout that says, okay, this is code compliant. But we right. really have an opportunity to get a better layout out of but this. But look at it from a 278 kind yeah, of viewpoint. Yeah. Or, and and or, also understanding your concern of 
but hey, we don't want to sacrifice zone A land to all residential, you know. Uh, right. So, and what I'm sitting here, and this is my crazy thought, the northeast corner, right, oh, I'm sorry, Michael, uh, across right there, that, that, that vacant area there that is in zone B, but it's right along the pedestrian spine, do you flip that to become zone A lands? Right, and you're suggesting move that dotted line so yeah. that the zone B moves more to the southeast? Yeah. And uh, zone A moves up north on the east side of that pedestrian spine? Right. That where you've reserved that area to still, so you haven't given up zone A land, but, uh, but if we feel we're gonna get a better layout. Mm -hmm. would, that, uh, would that require a, a variance from the ZBA? That's the question, Jim, because again, the, the line itself <clears throat> is not codified per se. So uh, I, I will agree with you with this. I think it's entirely at your discretion to maximize the code to the benefit of your client. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if it means sacrificing potentially a better massing plan for the sake of an indeterminate line, mm -hmm. then are we shooting ourselves in the in the foot? You know, the question, and maybe that's a question for Peter, is, you know, would would they need to seek a, a waiver? And the waiver could be done one of two ways: either either a waiver of the density requirements specific to this application, or a waiver of, uh, or a modification of the location of the, the delineation mm -hmm. so that you can accomplish the, the density and the, um, right. you know, the return right. on invest investment they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, personally I come down more in favor of the latter versus the former because we have very limited zone A lands in the whole district. Mm -hmm. Didn't this board move the zone A in another development? Yeah, I believe the planning board did authorize moving or switching lands between zone A and zone B with one of the other projects. So you're, you're suggesting that we have the authority to, to move that lane? I think this board may have, may have done that already on another project and I think um, you know, the, the idea would be to preserve the zone A land. Um, you know, we're also, I mean, we're in the middle of revising this thing too, so mm -hmm. that's something that we want to make sure we, if that's something that we want to do to make a better development, then we need to make sure that the revision includes that type of authority, so. Right, so maybe that's something that well, in with your response to the, to the three C item, you you give us a, a little. I mean, you could hand draw it. Just yeah. you know, the way I look at it is from a standpoint, a, ta a zoning code. We all have the experiences and the knowledge and whatnot. Is it's, it's somewhat structured, and at times it restrict, uh, restricts us from being planners, whether as a planning board, an applicant, or whatnot. And that's uh, like, I know this isn't clustering, I know it's not, but it's that principle, which is, okay, use the code to establish what you're allowed to do, but, but also make sure you get a good plan. Be well, planners. Well, I think, I think you're referring to something that I always like to I guess talk about is there's the spirit of the law and the letter of the law. Exactly. And I want, personally, I want these developments to, to follow both. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not interested in just the letter of the law. Correct. Uh, I want the spirit of the law. Correct, I agree. To be followed as well. And I, for one, am open to exploring that possibility. I'd, like to see how everybody else feels. No, it, it makes sense. Yeah. You're, you're dealing with the same, you may be changing where that AB boundary is, but you're just modifying it so 
It works better. It fits better. Does Lopez know that it didn't meet code when he redid this? I mean, why don't we just send it back to him and tell him like it's not meeting code? So, you know, come up with a plan that's, and meet that's code. Not, that's not up to him. Huh? That's not yeah. up to him. It, I think in his proposal, I mean, he was suggesting that this building would include more commercial in it to, it would all be first floor residential, or first floor commercial <coughs> with <coughs> residential above. Oh, just you want to bring another chair up and like <laughs> scooch yeah. around? Uh, no, I, I saw Chris Lopez today, and I talked to him about this, and he explained that his intent, he didn't pay attention to the line. He understood that this was, the second building was in the residential zone, but he said that this line is imaginary. It could be anywhere you want. So, and that, that was exactly his intent. Mm -hmm. And I asked him if I could quote him, and he said yes. Should have gotten him a, on a recording. <laughs> I, I'm just going to say, I'm yeah. thrilled with the way this conversation is now going, because I think that we've been stuck in the trees, and we need to see the forest, right? Right, We're, I the, agree. At the end of this, this is a pretty substantial <clears throat> size district, and uh, so I think this is a very helpful. You don't like sitting next to Mira? Is there a problem with Mira? No, I, I can. <laughs> no, <squeeze laughs> it. No, <laughs> See, you shouldn't have waited all these months to bring this up. You should have brought that up. I know. <laughs> I know you said you've been sitting on it. Come on. I know, but I thought that it was a confusing. Well, but in all honesty, everybody, <clears throat> this is why this dialogue was so important. There was no way I could spell that out writing, <laughs> you know, to, to address sure. it. So. So assume uh, it moves in this direction where, where um, I don't really want to say redrawing the lines, but moving, nudging lines in one direction or another, and uh, you know, creating more zone A space in one spot and zone B space in another spot. This layout. Um, well, I like the, that sort of downtowny street type feel. It, it's still two big apartment buildings. And how do we make it feel like, uh, like you're walking through a downtown village? Yes. And, and Mira brought up the variety of housing and structural types. How do those get incorporated in this type of scenario? They could be behind. You see the second building behind. A third building could be behind that as well, creating like a courtyard scenario. So on the north or side? Or we can put another building uh, facing the um, this uh, pathway on the on the west. No. I, there's yes. a lot there's a lot of ways that you could incorporate yeah. kind of right. more of the suburban rural village. Right. You, you know, you could tie in some some pergolas, some pedestrian bridges, some canopies, some awnings, you know. That's for the for you know, some hardscaping, all the kinds yeah. of things that 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 achieve what the mixed use zone was out to achieve to begin with, not just buildings and asphalt with a little green space. Right. I mean, a great example, I think. Microphone. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. I think I'll just give you an example that I think this comes close to recreating is if you look at the village of Fairport, starting at. Uh, on the south side of the bridge, you have Village Hall, then you have Packets Landing and um, uh, Fairport Village Landing. Three-story buildings right on Main Street. You hit the bridge, which is a east, you know, it bisects, which would be the pedestrian's mind. You get across that bridge, you then have the box factory, which is a four-story building, yeah, and then on the other side, you have three-story buildings. My point being, that it, to me, that is a village feel. If you're walking along the street and you've got, because don't forget with the setbacks and everything we're working, these buildings are pretty much sidewalk friendly per se. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually think you do create that. 
It's a good AG. point. Concealed, concealed parking, <clears throat> lots, lots of hardscaping, mm -hmm. um, combined with some softer landscaping, um, <laughs> lots of shadow lines, mm -hmm. awnings. My point is, it, you will definitely get a different feel walking and driving through there than you would through a typical neighborhood in Penfield. You're gonna know you're someplace different. And I think that's one of the goals of the manual. Mm -hmm. You're gonna know you're someplace different. <coughs> Other comments? Okay. I mean, even if you move the line, I mean, it's still like the, you still want it to be mixed use, not not apartments too. So it's got to have that kind of that village feel, I think is, right? Yeah, it, it sounds like everybody's more on the, on the same page in terms of meeting that elusive goal. Yeah, because actually what we would probably uh, propose doing um, you know, because they know the way the letter's written. I think what we would propose to do is come back with, I'm gonna use the term a true sketch plan, something that takes this plan and actually gets it more in line with what your sketch plan criteria is, mm -hmm. to take this feedback we've received tonight, uh, especially as it relates to the variety of housing. Point being is we wanna, I hate to say it this way, but you know, we just wanna be sure and so I think we would probably come back with, I would recommend come back with another sketch plan, but would have that detail to address, to start addressing um, the manual items um, so that we believe we're on the right path before we really dive into the deep end with a final site plan application. So just for the record, we wanna be sure too. Yes, right. Yeah. No, we appreciate that. I mean, that's why we're trying to do this the right way. Okay. So this has been helpful. Yeah, and though, I don't helpful. know, uh, Jason. I mean, those were uh, the couple areas I was wanted what was concerned that we made sure we discussed with them. Right. I believe those, to me, were the two big questions that we had. So, and it sounds right. like the same with you. So I think this has been very helpful, and we really do appreciate it. Oh, uh, I'm okay. sure I will say uh, about uh, no units above the restaurant. Oh, that is a good point. Um, what Mira did bring up was, you know, we did provide a response as to our <coughs> reasoning why we weren't proposing units above the restaurant user uh, up there. I yeah, it made sense. And the, yeah, is absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it was real good. I mean, yeah. she knows um, the code requires a, 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 a sound coefficient, mm -hmm. anyhow. Um, but yeah, absolutely, it's. You know that's uh, that's kind of you know 1920s putting apartments on top of a a, a speakeasy and yeah. you know you, you can't sleep all night. Okay, uh, board members, any final no. Good. comments? No. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much for Thank you. giving us the opportunity okay. to really have this dialogue. Mm -hmm. All right, and we'll put your room back together for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So with that, we uh, would you like to move to continue to table? Yes, move to continue to table. We have a second. Yeah, I'll second. Okay. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. <coughs> Anything else, Doug? That's all I have for you guys we, tonight. All right, everybody, thanks for coming. Um, don't go crazy on Halloween. Be safe. <laughs> We'll see you in a couple weeks. <laughs>